All right, welcome to Community Forum. Ron Vecchia here with uh, Tanji Safuni. Uh, Tanji is from the Community Development and Project Man Manager. Those are kind of two subtitles mm -hmm. under the town manager, mm -hmm. uh, Jim McKenna. And she's joining us today to talk about the Winthrop Ferry Service. And, you know, it's kind of a, an, ex an exciting time for the town of Winthrop. The ferry plans for the ferry have been on the drawing boards for like 15, 20 years. And it was uh, way back when, probably 15 years ago, when we got our first seed money to, to study the possibility of a ferry in Winthrop and whether or not it would be viable. And at the time, they had done a study. And it turned out that there was about 1,800 residents of Winthrop that actually worked in the financial district of that area. So the town, uh, you know, proceeded to uh, look for some funds. We got some funds for the uh, Seaport Bond Council, and then 9-11. And of course, everything dried up after 9-11 for, for several years, anything to do with ferry services, probably because of security reasons mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. But um, fast forward, the last couple of years, there's uh, been a tremendous amount of work. We now have a, a beautiful pier. Um, the public landing is all redesigned mm -hmm. and an area where people can sit and have lunch. There's tables and period lighting. It's really a cool place. And this past couple of weeks, that was about a month ago, we had the, the grand celebration. We did. We and, did. And uh, we christened the vessel. That's correct. The vessel's name? If you, Valkyrie. 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 First of all, let's... What, why that name? Well, we wanted to get the community involved. Mm -hmm. So we put out, we had a uh, coloring contest and named the ferry contest. And we sent out over 1,000 applications to all of the students in the schools. And we received hundreds of entries. Mm -hmm. And one of the entries was Valkyrie. And we loved the name. And Joe Montaldo, the harbor master, mentioned to us that when a Viking would pass away with his weapon still in his hand, mm -hmm. he was shipped up to heaven on a Valkyrie. Oh. So knowing that we were the Winthrop Vikings, we mm -hmm. felt that this was appropriate. It was awesome. a strong name. Mm -hmm. um, we also ran the name by Boston Harbor Cruises, mm -hmm. who uh, we've been working really closely with. They loved the name. So then we needed to come up with a design, mm -hmm. and I'm not a graphic designer. So I, yeah, I used Facebook, social media, and I asked our public and all of our residents who would like to help me mm -hmm. come up with the design. And so we had a resident who worked hours with me coming up with this logo. Mm -hmm. And um, so there was somebody else in the community that came up with the logo. Right. And uh, yeah, and then we worked with a lot of our local vendors to come up with... Um, our uniforms, our flyers, the vocational school mm -hmm. um, helped us with all of our uh, marketing materials like our coffee mugs and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we've been getting the community involved. Now Tanj, this is our boat, it's owned by the town, mm -hmm. it was built for the town, mm -hmm. it's up and running. But tell us what led up to it, you know, the planning that was involved. Uh, Boston Harbor, uh, they've, they've helped us through oh, the last couple of years. They've been a great partner. Can you um, kind of explain their yes, whole connection? Yes, I, there there? was a design by the state. Um, so there were specs that we needed to follow um, for the design of this particular boat. Mm -hmm. And the boat, the, there was a bid, and uh, Eugene Evans out of Maryland won the bid. So he built the boat for us. Mm -hmm. um, our staff did go down there a couple of times to check on it while it was being built making sure that it followed the specs that were necessary. And the boat was supposed to be delivered early fall, but like anything, everything, mm -hmm. there's always delays when you're building something. And it ended up coming up here, I think, the first week in November. So at that time, we started working with Boston Harbor Cruises to have our staff that we had just hired being trained by Boston Harbor Cruises. So our captains and crew were following them for a couple of weeks. Okay. And then at that time, we took the boat out of the water. We brought it over to have it winterized um, in East Boston. Mm -hmm. We then resumed at the end of March, and Boston Harbor Cruises basically took us under their wing. Um, they were a great partner. They worked with us for three weeks, training all of our captains how to dock the boat, our crew on how to handle all of the, yeah, the ticketing. And they didn't charge us for any of this. Really? And all of the revenue that they collected for our ticket processing was just passed right over to us, mm -hmm. which was great. We cut the ties with them May 6th, and we turned over um, 
to our brand new reservation system called Fair Harbor. So they are the host for all of our t online ticketing and all of our ticketing that happens on the ferry as well. We went with them because they are their forte is reservations. And mm -hmm. so all of our tracking is there. If I want to run a report every hour on how many transactions have happened, um, I can do that. Right. So we can track our ridership. We yeah, can good. see which rides are working for us, which are not, mm -hmm. um, which is very cost um, effective for us sure. because we've eliminated a, a ride in the morning knowing that we weren't getting a lot of rides, yet it was costing us a lot of money in personnel. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing. And it's very flexible. So if we change the schedule, I can just go online and change everything online yeah. very easily. So, so. Y you do it online if you want. If you want to book a you know a ticket, mm -hmm. you can do it online. Can you also do it there? Mm -hmm. You can walk on board, and you can you know the crew will ask you you know do you have did you order online? If you do, you just show your ID, mm -hmm. and they can pull you right up on the system, oh, and cool. they'll see that you already purchased it. Mm -hmm. Or you can buy it right then and there. And when you buy it right then and there, they just process it right on the on the um, on our Surface Pros that we're using. It's like a little tablet, mm -hmm. and they use this Fair Harbor system to place all of the orders. So anything, either on board or off board, is all tracked through the same reservation system. Okay, so you could you could actually get on the boat mm -hmm. and now use debit cards, credit cards. We can use credit cards. We have credit card swipers, and we can accept cash. Okay. And um, recent, just recently, as of uh, a week and a half ago, I had hard tickets mm -hmm. that were printed because I had a lot of real estate companies asking me if you know they could buy packets of forty. So mm -hmm. you know if they make a sale. They can present free tickets to you know to oh, the new good. owners, yeah, which that's I think good. is great. Absolutely. Um, so I have so now you can buy them for two hundred and ninety dollars. You buy forty tickets, mm -hmm. and I can actually give you. I'll hand you forty tickets in my office mm -hmm. through me, and um, you can redeem those on board. Okay. So there's cool. a, this. So tell us ways. about the the daily uh, runs. Mm -hmm. Basically, in the morning, how many runs do you have in the morning? Okay, so currently right now we have an 805 run that's going out Monday through Friday and it's going out to Rose Wharf and it comes back by 9 a.m. We then go out around 11:20 to Spectacle Island. Mm -hmm. And from Spectacle, we go out to Rose Wharf and we arrive back in Winthrop around 1 o'clock. Okay, so if you go to Spectacle, mm -hmm. And you stay there. Yep. Does the boat come back? Obviously yes, it comes does. Out? So then it'll come back and it'll pick you up around 3:25. Oh, that's nice. Yes. So when we when we were working with the Boston Harbor Islands, they 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 said to us that you don't need more than four hours on this on this mm -hmm. island. I mean, there is a shuttle that once you get off at Spectacle, you can take another shuttle to go to other islands. Right. Um, so if you want to 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 do more and explore more, you can. And um, but they did recommend that we arrive there sometime prior to four o'clock because they like to shut down Spectacle at that time. So we do arrive back at three twenty-five, and um, from there we go back out to Rose Wharf to pick up some of our commuters mm -hmm. um, that are working um, till four o'clock, and we pick them up and we come back to Winthrop by four thirty. So you do have the luxury that when you when you get on the boat at Spectacle Island, you can go out to Rose Wharf, so you get to stay on the boat a little longer and then come into Winthrop. And then we have additional night runs that we do at night okay, and on the weekends. Okay, so if I want to take my wife for dinner mm -hmm. and we go down there, is there something that leaves like around 4 or 5 o'clock? Yes. So if you're going to be down there on Monday through Friday, there is something at, that leaves at 5.15 mm -hmm. and it arrives over at Rose Wharf at 5.40. Okay. If that's too early and you work till 5, you can catch the 6.15 and okay. you would get there at 6.40. So what's the last What's the last one back at night? Okay, so like on, on Friday, Friday Thursday and Fridays, um, you can leave Winthrop at 9.15 to go out to Rose Wharf if you wanted to at 9.40. Mm -hmm. And coming back, if you want to like spend an evening there and get back into Bo back into Winthrop, you could leave around quarter of ten, and you arrive in Winthrop at ten past oh, ten. That's cool. It's a very easy, quick ride, yeah. um, and no matter what time of the day, it's always beautiful. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's during the day or at nighttime. The city line is so beautiful, lit up at night. Yeah. So, and yeah. I've done it. I've done it all. I've done the Fridays. I've done the Saturdays. I've done week. I've done trips in the morning so I could get a good feel on how the commuters feel. I've, mm -hmm. I've, I've questioned them on what do you want us to change and right. um, tremendous feedback, great feedback, very positive feedback. So um, we're really exciting and every day our ridership picks up, every day. That's good. What's yeah. it cost? It's $8.50 mm -hmm. um, for a one-way trip. 
Okay. Okay. And six dollars and fifty cents for seniors. Mm -hmm. And if you're an adult and you have two children with you and they're younger than ten years old, they're free. Oh, that's so good. two children are free for each accompany adult. Right. Yeah. Now I noticed you've you've adjusted the bus service so the bus actually goes in. I did. I reached out to our contacts that we have with the MBTA. I met with them about two months ago. And we knew that our streets were too narrow to have a bus stop along Shirley Street. Mm -hmm. um, so I asked if they would come into the actual ferry terminal building and work around our schedules. So they've adjusted to our schedules because our schedules have changed from spring to summer. And they do now do pickups and drop offs That's around good. the commuting hours, That's which good. is really nice, yeah. Now, tell me about the connection with Quincy. The, I understand there's some things going on with your service connecting to other uh, commuter uh, boats. Correct. We originally, Quincy had reached out to us about three months ago and asked us how we started up and what we could do to help them. And we couldn't do anything at that time because we thought that we were going to be working with the JFK Library in UMass Boston. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, they're, they're under so much construction right now that it wasn't pedestrian friendly to get off the boat and get to the JFK Library. Right. So they won't be ready for us until next year. So at that time, I reached back out to our contacts at Quincy and said, we have an opening and I think this could work. So we met with them. They were on board right away. And it was just working out the logistics with DCR. DCR mm -hmm. owns Squantum Point, mm -hmm. so there's some things with um, some of the um, some of the pilings and just minor issues right. that th that we met with the commissioner of DCR. He was very open um, to ferry transportation for this working, and he has people working on this diligently to um, get the pier up and running so we can start arriving there in August. Yeah, that's great. So we'll be making two morning trips, a mid-afternoon trip out there, and evening trips out there. That's great. That's very great. good. And it, it, there's a brand new boardwalk they just built. So I know a lot of people are probably familiar with Marina Bay. Mm -hmm. And now the boardwalk is connected to Squantum Point. So when you get off, you could get on the boardwalk and walk right to Marina Bay. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's it's awesome. really nice. What other potential things down the road are you looking at? We would love to go to the Seaport District mm -hmm. because there's a big demand there. Um, Especially now, you know, this time of year with the um, the tent that's there. I know, uh, with all the concerts that's yeah. there and legal seafood and all the different great restaurants mm -hmm. that are there all the time. The problem is, is that a lot of that is owned by um, by private people that already have contracts with certain people to be docked there. Right. Um, so we need to find a space that we can use. Mm -hmm. And so Massport doesn't have any jurisdiction at all there. We spoke to Massport about that, and um, I think we still have to work out some details on that. Yeah, yeah I think details need to be worked. I know, you know, um, the Convention Bureau that's there is also having a really difficult time with traffic. Mm -hmm. So. They've, you know, I've spoken to people over there and they would love to be able to work with us to try to transport people over there by water sure. versus people having to get there by, by car. Mm -hmm. We've got nice little uh, bed and breakfast in Winthrop. Mm. We've got the hotel on Shirley Street. I know, I heard great things place. about that. Yes. And um, it turns out that a lot of uh, foreign tourists love to, to be outside the city. They like to stay at a bed and breakfast at small yeah. hotels, boutique hotels. I see them and walking around our yeah. streets, too. I love it. And yeah. it's so great for them. They can just go down, you know. Mm. It, have you done anything um, with the realtors in, in terms of marketing to, to get them involved at all? I... I I, I have to be honest, I, I've only presented at the chamber meetings, which I know some of them are at, mm -hmm. and I've given them our schedules. I have not gone there yet. Mm -hmm. I need to start working with a lot of the local places, see who wants to advertise, see if there's certain deals that we would like to put together. Maybe like um, discount tickets discounts, or something. Um, yeah. We've talked to the golf course, yeah. um, and the golf course is willing to, to partner with us. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, maybe if you purchase a ticket and you want to golf, you can you purchase a ticket and you can go golf, you know. We, uh, yes, that is in the pipeline, and we're going to be working through all of that. I, um, I, I want to work with everyone, but I don't want to rush this. I want to be able to take baby steps just because I know that our schedule is changing once again mm -hmm. in August. Mm -hmm. And once we solidify that schedule, and I have one schedule that I know is going to work for everybody, I can do like a full-blown marketing Great. plan on that, Great. you know? Sounds and I want awesome. everyone to bear with us with mm -hmm. the changing of the schedule because it's growing pains. Yeah. And I think the number one thing I want everyone to understand is that I've received hundreds of requests of what would work best for everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm sharing a space, doc space, with the MBTA. So it's the MBTA spot. So they have all the hot 
Mm -hmm. times. They have the five o'clock runs. They have because right. they know that's when they can fill up their boats. Right. And so I can only be on that dock when they're not. Right, so my right. times are very limited, mm -hmm. but it's a great spot that we dock at at Rose mm -hmm. Wharf. Mm -hmm. And so that's just what it is. So I appreciate everybody's feedback and I'm doing the best that we can do, mm -hmm. but I'm very limited at what I can do. So I want everyone to understand that. Well, the main thing is that you, you, the key word that you said, you, your ridership increases every mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. That's the m most important thing. Correct. And uh, usually in a situation, any new upstart business, the first year or two, you know, it's almost like a break even, sometimes lose, losing money. Mm. But you, you do it correctly, put it all together, and a year or two down the road, things are going to be running real smooth. That's what we think. You guys have done your homework, and uh, we wish you the very best. Thank you. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk yeah. to me. Well, Barbara Bishop was actually down at the ceremony mm. when we christened the vessel. Yeah. And uh, we're going to run that film uh, in a few minutes when we get through speaking with uh, Tangi. Any other things you want to just, you know, surface? Please like us on Facebook, The okay. Winthrop Ferry, and come to our town website under Discover Winthrop. Our schedule is there. And just please, you know, come out and take it one time and let us know if you like it. Okay. We're I hoping everybody has a positive experience with I it. I think we're going to take it Friday. I was talking to my wife and I said, let's go in town on Friday because yes. she's off. So. Well, I took my yeah. parents on Saturday yeah. and they enjoyed it so yeah. much. Yeah. yeah. Well, There's yeah. live music, free live music when you get off the boat, live bands. Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and Thursday night, different genres of music. And then Friday night, it's free classical um, movie night, all for really? free on the waterfront at the Boston Harbor Hotel. Yeah. So it's, it's really nice because as soon as you get off, it's right there, and it's free. Thank you, Tangie. You're welcome. Nice Thank you. you. Thank you. And let's watch the uh, film. Uh, Barbara Bishop, uh, she shot this the day of the celebration, the christening of the ship, the vessel, uh, the Winthrop Ferry. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> My name is James McKenna, town manager of this beautiful town of Winthrop. And we're so happy that you're all here this morning. Um, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Speaker, for being here. Thank you for coming. Thank um, you. Thanks for being here this morning. To all the friends and uh, patrons of our new ferry and uh, Residents of the town of Winthrop, and I want to acknowledge a couple of quick people. I know Mayor Arigos from Revere is here. Thank you, Mayor, for coming. Thank you. Really appreciate you being here. <laughs> Members of our town council, uh, Council President Robert Driscoll, Linda Kala is here. I saw uh, Council Von Corey was here. Hello. And uh, Russ Sanford, thank you all for being here. Peter Gill, our former council president, is here. Thank you, Peter, for being here. And we have Heather Engman from the council as well. Hi, Heather. I didn't recognize you in your Foster Grants. It's a very stylish. Uh, <laughs> John Massero, our superintendent of uh, schools. Terry Delahanty, our police chief, is here, I see. And if I'd miss anyone, Paul you're Flanagan. all... Who? Paul Flanagan. Oh, oh, yeah. Paul Flanagan, our fire chief, is here. Thanks, Paul. And uh, uh, Deacon Leo, thank you for being here and helping with our celebration. Diane, yes, I'll acknowledge you too. <laughs> um, so many of you are here because you've lived through this whole effort, this long, long pregnancy of uh, bringing a ferry to this uh, seaside community. And uh, so we all share something special in, in, in what we've all done together as a team uh, to make this day uh, a wonderful event and I I wouldn't be anywhere if I didn't acknowledge some very important people who put this all together uh, Tangi Safuni our uh, 
left and right hands on this whole ferry enterprise. Uh, Tangi, thank you for everything you do. And uh, Rich, your husband, uh, putting it all together as well. Larissa and all the team that are here. Uh, Ernie Sardillo, uh, who heads up our operation for the ferry. Thank you, Ernie, Joe Montalto, and Larry Powers, the leadership of the Harbor Department. Thank you both for uh, adopting the ferry as a new uh, component of, uh, of what you do, uh, which is so important. Um, you know, when I first came to Winthrop, they told me that there were only two ways to come in and out of Winthrop, and I thought they were being metaphoric, but actually it was true. There were only two ways to come in and out of Winthrop. And uh, today I'm happy to announce that there are three ways now to come in and out of Winthrop. And that's really important. Um, our connectivity to uh, the rest of uh, the region is extremely important. Not only just to have access to, to Boston and have Boston and, and surrounding areas have access to Winthrop, but also uh, just to have another alternative way uh, a means of, e of, e of transportation and uh, as transportation is such an important uh, subject in this commonwealth and I'll, I'm sure the speaker will address that uh, more directly but uh, this is a wonderful opportunity for the town because you know it, it represents Winthrop realizing its potential I think we've all known that Winthrop is is being discovered um, that's good and that's sometimes challenging but it's important that we uh, become part of a bigger mission uh, to realize our potential to latch on to a dream and achieve that dream and this ferry represents that dream being realized those dreams don't get realized without a lot of hard work and a lot of support and I have to acknowledge a couple of quick uh, 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 folks uh, I want to say thank you to MassDOT uh, their leadership behind this has been very important and then going forward it'll continue to be very important uh, Secretary Pollock and her representative here, Dan. Uh, thank you for coming here, Dan Fielding. Um, I also want to recognize uh, our neighbors in Boston, Mayor Walsh and uh, Rich McGinnis, who continue to lend help and support to this ferry because they see it as important to bringing people back and forth from Boston. Um, I want to recognize uh, Jim Cowdell from Lynn who uh, is working with the city of Lynn to uh, improve ferry transportation there and sees this as a, a, a matrix of, of ferry service throughout the Boston Harbor, which uh, we entirely endorse and support Lynn's effort to get a ferry as well. Um, I want to acknowledge Senator Thomas McGee, who is very, very uh, important to Winthrop in terms of making sure that we get a voice in the Senate on, uh, on ferry uh, issues. Senator Ed Markey, who I can remember, I had uh, a plate of runny eggs one morning with Senator Markey at our high tide uh, restaurant when I first started. And he looked me in the eye and he said, Jim, you have to make this ferry happen. We put a lot of money and resources behind this. So work with the speaker and work with everyone here to make this happen. And although he couldn't be here today, he sends his regards. And uh, for Senator Markey, I tip my hat and say thank you on behalf of this community for all you did to bring resources to make this happen. And uh, the Governor's Seaport Economic Council uh, supported the development of this pier uh, and, and, and the development of that landing. Uh, so we thank the Governor and the Seaport Economic Council for your support. Uh, and we're, we're in the business, we're in the transportation business. And sometimes when you start a new business, it can be lonely. And you don't have very few, many friends who help you when you first open your doors for business. But there's been one friend that we will never forget, and that's the Nolan family of Boston Harbor Cruises, who came out here and have helped us deliver on today because they trained us, they worked with us, they showed us the ropes, they showed us what to do, and we, we can't thank them enough, Allison and Rick and all the folks at Boston Harbor Cruises who wants to see this Winter Ferry be a success. So thank you to the Nolans. And I just want to mention a couple of other folks. I know my town council um, deserves a lot of credit, both past and present, because all of you have continued to support this effort um, with uh, financial support as well as direction and, uh, and policy with regard to adopting this as, as, as a, new, a new business for Winthrop. Uh, Paul Rupp, 
uh, his consultant firm helped us along the way, and many others who, who continue to contribute to this. Thank you all for what you do and for the, the teamwork that you've provided to make this day uh, happen. And with that, I'd like to ask the speaker to come forward and say a few words for us. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, and what a marvelous day it is as we're celebrating a ferry service here in our, here in our great uh, community. First of all, I, I just want to say Senator Bonfori is in the middle of the budget deliberations in the Senate, which means he could not be here. I told him he could have made it here if he just agreed with everything that we did in the House. <laughs> but apparently, uh, the Senate President wouldn't go along with that. I'm not so sure. But what, a, what a, you know, usually you're all very excited, I'm sure, to get here and to get on the boat and have a wonderful uh, trip around the harbor. Uh, I will not be joining you. As you know, I get terribly seasick. <laughs> so this is sort of, I come here today with sort of a mixed emotion. Just being here right now, I'd rather look at you than look at what the boats, uh, the boats out there, actually. But this is a great day for our community, one which we've been talking about and working on for so long. And obviously it seems that it's just a natural progression, a, uh, you know, Winthrop, the water, and having this new mode of transportation. And the town manager is correct. You know, right now one of the biggest issues facing us as a commonwealth is transportation. Whether it's at the T, whether it's our roads or bridges or whatever, this is a, a topic which I can tell you on is one of the top topics that we're dealing with on a on a, on, a, on a daily basis. And this is so important for our community to give people, first of all, that opportunity to get away from that some of that congestion going back and forth in, in, into Boston. But it also provides uh, the opportunity for folks to, who want to have a night out in Boston, or more importantly, folks from Boston who want to come to the beautiful town of Winthrop. Or Revere, Mr. Mayor, by the way, since I do represent Revere, I mean, uh, maybe you could meet them at the landing and, and take them into the city. Um, so the importance of this, you know, cannot be overstated. As Jim had stated, this has been a long time in coming. There have been so many folks from our community and outside community. I also want to extend a, as Jim had mentioned, a special thank you uh, to the administration and, and the governor. Uh, for their work to make this a uh, reality. So thank you all so very, very much uh, for coming here tonight, uh, for today, I should say, and most importantly, thank you for the part that each and every one of you played to make today a possibility. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As I always say, we can't find a better friend than the Speaker. Uh, in everything that we do and, and really realizing our dreams as a community. That we wouldn't be where we are today without that gentleman right there. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for everything that you do for us. I'd like to ask our Council President to come forward, Council Bob Driscoll, to say a few words. Thank you, Jim. Um, uh, I'd like to also uh, welcome Anthony Moreshi from uh, Congresswoman Clark's office, who's in attendance here today. Um, on behalf of the Winter uh, Town Council, past and present, I think, uh, I want to just uh, welcome everybody and thank everybody for this long, long road toward our ferry. I think uh, I was actually on the Board of Selectmen more than 15 years ago when we created a uh, citizens committee to start to try to begin the process of uh, building this pier, getting a ferry, having a ferry terminal building. Fifteen years is a long time. I think um, we've, uh, if nothing else, we should applaud this uh, pers perseverance that this community has to get through such an important and, and good project. So I think we really deserve a round of applause for that. We hung in there. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about this vessel. This is uh, Dave Hubbard, who's the historian of Winthrop, has told me that there were six or more uh, ferries in Winthrop over the years, all the way back to the 1800s when um, people used to take a ferry from Boston to go have dinner at the Taft Hotel. And some of these ferries lasted longer than others. Um, this project in particular feels different to me than some of the more recent ones. I think the strategic plan that has been put in place by Jim McKenna and his team is different. And uh, 
Some of the past projects have relied uh, mostly on commuting to Boston, but this project has a lot more going on with it. There's, uh, we're going to do more. We're going to try to get the uh, ferry to go out to the island. We're working with some other partners, perhaps doing some non-Winthrop uh, commuter service. That's a really important part of this, to make this sustainable. The other thing I'd say is that uh, you know we all have a role in making this successful, and I think um, this is a change in the way that we think about transportation. I mean, but what we need to do is make this ferry feel like taking a bus to the Heights or driving a car. It's just another way to get from one place to the other. And we should try to incorporate that into our lives. If half of the town uh, took this ferry once, or did a round trip once during the season, this project would be financially sustainable yeah, right, off, right off the bat. I don't expect we're going to have that kind of volume right off the bat, but I'm just saying that we could we really need to encourage folks to use this as a regular mode of transportation. And uh, I think if we do, this is going to be a very successful endeavor. So thank you very much, and uh, congratulations to everybody. Um, Councilor Sanford, Russ Sanford, wants to come up and say a few words. Thank you, Council President. As many of you remember and, and take claim for, this has been a concerted effort uh, by town council, by the previous board of selectmen, as council president I had mentioned earlier. Uh, he was on that particular selectmen's group, and now he's back. He wanted to finish off making sure that we had a ferry. So he's been working hard, directly or indirectly. But uh, we welcome everybody who's uh, been part of this. You know, 16 or 17 years ago, we were over at the, over the uh, Winter Yacht Club, and we looked over here and we said, you know, we're surrounded by water. We should have a ferry. It should happen. And again, a lot of the hard work through the previous Board of Selectmen, the Chamber of Commerce, of course, as well as the uh, present and past uh, council. But special thanks to Jim McKenna because, you know, he, even though we supported and we financially and orchestrated a lot, a lot of what took place was out of Jim McKenna's office and his vision of what Winthrop should be. So I'm excited about today. Every time I look out my back, off my back deck and I see, I see her making the commute to Boston, I have a little bit of special pride. And it's because of all of you supporting the council, supporting the town manager, Tangi, and, all, and everybody who's worked hard to make the ferry successful. Let's keep it going. This is the new Winthrop by the Sea. Hey. <laughs> Thank you, Council. So now comes the fun part. We're actually going to have a blessing of our vessel, as tradition would have it. We have Deacon Leo here to help us with that. And we're going to ask a very important lady, uh, Councillor Kala, and along with uh, Tangi Safuni and a few others who are going to join uh, the ladies, and, and we hope all the ladies come down and actually uh, break a bottle of real champagne, believe it or not. Now, we, we didn't buy it with town funds, so trust me, uh, Mike, uh, we're, we're legal. <laughs> but if you don't do it with real alcohol, it, 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 something goes wrong. So my psychic uh, Tangi Safuni tells me, so we have to make sure that we do it right. So um, let's have a, a blessing of the vessel, and then we're going to have a breaking of a bottle of champagne over the vessel. So um, Deacon Leo, we're going to actually go down to the vessel and do this. And grab a glass of non-alcoholic uh, bubbly and bring it with you and uh, help us uh, continue the tradition of uh, making sure that we're uh, a ship-shaped vessel uh, going into the future. So grab a, grab a glass of bubbly, come on down to the boat. So let's begin, as we always do, with a prayer of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It is an honor for me to bless Winthrop's newest ferry, the Valkyrie. Today we gather to bless this boat, the Valkyrie, and those who will use it for work or pleasure. The Lord calmed the Sea of Galilee and brought his disciples to safety. So let us commend those who sealed this craft into Jesus' care. Let us pray. God of boundless love, for your son Jesus Christ, we ask you to bless this boat, the Valkyrie, its equipment, and all who will use it. We ask you to protect them from the dangers of wind and rain and all the perils of the deep. And may Christ, who calmed the storm and filled the nets of his disciples, bring us all to the harbor of life. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. And may Almighty God bless this boat in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of us and our families.
together with all the ladies who can join her. Don't be shy. We need all the support we can get. I heard you had a great backhand, Linda. Oh, yeah. Strike one. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! 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 That's so We're official. That's how you do it. Thank you, Linda. Unless you were thinking that was me, were you? No, 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 no. <laughs> right. Not the second time. <laughs> that was great. I got you. Make sure you get me the back. I don't want to be behind the backhand, uh, Linda Kyle. Go, go. I'll take that. Raise <laughs> yeah. your glasses. And now a toast to the Valkyrie and to the town of Winthrop. Come on here. Come on up and have some lunch and some uh, refreshments in our landing building. Welcome aboard the Valkyrie for your trip to Boston. The Valkyrie is a United States Coast Guard certified passenger vessel. We are required to inform you of our safety equipment. We carry a full complement of life jackets for every passenger, which are located in cabinets in the front of the cabin, with life jacket drawing plackets posted on the doors of the cabinets. Fire extinguishers are located fore and aft in the main cabin, and a throwable life ring and man overboard ladder are located at the bow of the vessel. Please remain seated during departures and arrivals, as well as when we are approaching or leaving at dark. Smoking is prohibited at all times aboard the Valkyrie. If you have any questions or problems, please feel free to ask a crew member and we will be happy to assist you. Thank you for riding the Winter Ferry.